Would this make a good cash container? How about this one? 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 At its core, geocaching is a game about finding hidden containers using GPS technology. But if those containers are terrible, then geocaching becomes terrible. So today on Webcacher, we're talking about five guidelines for good geocaching containers and giving examples. Hi folks, you're watching Webcacher, where we give you all the tips on how to navigate to, locate, and log geocaches, and have amazing adventures while doing it. If you enjoy the video that you watch today, make sure to hit that subscribe button. There's also a bell there that you can click on to get notifications on your phone or tablet whenever we publish new videos. Geocaching only exists because people have hid geocaches. And the vast majority of those geocaches involve a hidden container, especially if the cache type are one of these or one of these. Have you ever written or read a geocaching log that said, gosh, I really loved finding the cracked plastic, the broken glass. I loved taking that wet, soggy log book and having to wring out all of the moisture before I tried in vain to sign it. If you did, I sure bet it was sarcasm. So if we want geocaching to be better, then geocachers themselves have to be the ones to put out the best containers out there. So what I want to give to you today are five guidelines for what makes a good cache container. Guideline number one, your cache must be waterproof. If your cache is outside, as most are, it will be exposed to the elements. And in most places of the world, that means it will be exposed to both rain and to snow. Have you ever had the experience of having an amazing adventure or a hike or a tough find? And when you finally find the geocache, you take out the swag and you notice that it's filled with water. It's kind of a buzzkill, isn't it? And in my opinion, it's worse the bigger a cache gets. And while no container is perfectly waterproof, I think we should do our best to find the most waterproof containers that we can when we hide geocaches. Guideline number two, your geocache should be durable. Geocaches should be meant to take a beating. If someone were to drop your geocache, would it break? That's why glass containers are always a bad idea. If your geocache is going to be outside, you have to ask yourself about moisture. If your geocache is going to be exposed to things like rain, then you have to ask yourself if a metal container is a good idea. It's not. These Altoid containers, they're very popular and they sure smell good, but unfortunately, they do rust. Ammo cans are sort of the exception to that rule. They are metal and they do rust, but in my experience, they rust so slowly that it's almost negligible. Guideline number three, your geocache container should be clean. I'm not talking about the outside. I'm primarily talking about the inside of the geocache, especially if you're using an old food container. Take, for example, the peanut butter jar. It's a very popular container in the United States. However, it's important that the inside is cleaned out. Why? Because many geocachers have a peanut allergy. And peanut allergies are no laughing matter. In fact, some people have even died from it. That's why if you're going to be using something like a peanut butter jar, it's important that you get all traces of peanut out of the jar. I happen to have a peanut butter jar right here. It's camo taped, so you're just gonna have to take my word that the inside is clean. Not only did I wipe it down with soap and water, but I also soaked it in watered down bleach. Guideline number four, your geocache should be both practical and functional. There should be no question at all about how to open and close the container. Unless, of course, figuring out how to open the geocache is the whole point of the geocache, like some of these 3D printed puzzle containers as seen here. Bottleneck containers, like this pill bottle here, aren't really practical or functional. Sometimes getting a logbook out of this can be pretty difficult. Now you may look at this and say, I could get a log out of that without any problem. But you know what? Sometimes when there's swag inside, it sure makes it difficult. Guideline number five. If your geocache is going to be hidden in an urban environment, make sure that it's clearly marked. Why? Because if a muggle, a non-geocacher, finds the container, it's important that they don't think that it's a bomb. 
Take, for example, this cache container. I found this picture online. If this cache is out in the wilderness, it's probably fine. But if someone finds that in a parking lot, chances are the bomb squad's going to be called and it will be blown up. And unfortunately, this has happened before. Just take a look at some of the headlines here, here, and here. These are just some of the many examples of when geocaches have been exploded by bomb squads. So folks, that's it. Those are my guidelines on what makes a good cache container. Are there any ideas that I missed? Let us know in the comments below, and your comments may be featured on a future episode of WebCacher. I am a bad geocache.